As 3D artists, we're asked to do so many things, to learn so many disciplines and be on top of the latest techniques and tools. That's no easy task. That's why I put together this list of some of the top software that I'm seeing 3D artists using in hopes to open your eyes, see what's out there, and see what you can add to your own 3D workflow. Ready to dive in? Let's check it out. Let's begin with the most critical step in a 3D workflow, and that is the planning phase. Because let's be real, if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail. Concept development and creating mood boards is key to creating amazing renders. Now it's easy enough to create boards on Pinterest, but even better is using a free app called PureRef. PureRef allows you to gather references, create mood boards, and have them actually sit right on top of your interface. You can even adjust the transparency over top of your application too. So whether you're modeling, creating materials, or just trying to match a lighting setup, PureRef allows you to have those reference images close at hand. Now the key to creating high quality renders is that it requires high quality assets. Luckily, there's plenty of software out there to help artists source and create high quality assets. First up is Quixel Bridge, Megascans, and MetaHumans. Quixel Bridge is a free content management software from Epic Games that allows you to browse and export massive libraries of assets that are in their Megascans and MetaHumans catalogs for use in your 3D application of choice, like Cinema 4D. Now the best part is, is that the Quixel Bridge for Cinema 4D plugin allows you to easily export out assets with materials automatically set up for the third party render that you have set up within Cinema 4D, whether that be Redshift, Octane, you name it. Now in addition to Megascans, there is MetaHumans, which is a crazy insane plugin by Epic that allows you to create realistic digital humans with a few clicks of a button. This software is fairly new at this point with limited export ability, but MetaHumans is definitely something to keep your eye on. If you find yourself rendering a lot of nature scenes, World Creator and Forester are absolute must haves. Let's start off with World Creator. It's a real time terrain and landscape generator that does what the name says. It helps you to quickly world build and do it procedurally. Now, after you create your world, you can then easily export into game engines, modeling apps, and 3D apps like Cinema 4D. Now, landscapes typically require natural elements, and that's where Forrester comes in. Forrester is a plugin for Cinema 4D that allows you to create customizable natural elements like trees, plants, rocks, and grass super easily. With their C4D plugin, you can easily import, customize, and animate Forrester assets with fine-tuned control. So that's nature, but what about people? Daz Studio is the go-to software for creating realistic 3D characters, and it's free. Daz allows you to build your own customized and fully rigged characters from scratch, pose them, add hair, clothing, and accessories, and even apply animation to them or animate them from scratch. In addition to the free assets that are provided, Daz has a massive library of assets that you can download on their marketplace called Daz Central. Now, another software people use with characters a lot is Marvelous Designer. Marvelous is a very popular choice for making realistic clothes and cloth sims. The cloth sims that are made in this software are super fast, detailed, and so insanely realistic that it's no wonder it's being used a ton in motion graphics. It's very easy to export your characters from C4D or your app of choice, bring into Marvelous for dressing, and then export back into Cinema 4D for final rendering. Now I'm sure you've seen plenty of characters with realistic clothes, and you can bet that those clothes are created using Marvelous Designer. So we covered a lot of software that can provide pre-made assets and help you make custom assets, but what about modeling your own content from scratch? Enter ZBrush a standalone sculpting and modeling app. ZBrush is the go-to application for sculpting not only soft surface modeling, but hard surfaces as well, in an intuitive and powerful way. A lot of people might associate ZBrush with highly detailed and realistic character sculpts, but I'm seeing it being used in MoGraph more and more. When you sculpt, you need a ton of geometry to get all that detail, so to be able to animate it in, say, Cinema 4D, 
you need to have way less geometry, and that's possible using ZBrush's Z Remesher, which basically creates a lower poly object while trying to maintain as much original detail as possible. This way you have a lighter asset to use with, say, joints and deformers in Cinema 4D. In addition to being an amazing sculpting app, it also allows artists to create UV maps, paint textures, and they just recently added a dynamic system that allows you to create beautiful cloth simulations perfect for creating clothing. Another popular software that you can use to generate lighter geometry in 3D applications is Quad Remesher. It'll automatically remesh or retopologize your mesh to make it way lighter and more manageable to use. Quad Remesher is perfect for using alongside Volume Builder meshes. Now, once you created the model, next step is to texture it, right? So let's cover some software that will help you do just that. The gold standard in material authoring has to be the Substance Software Suite that includes Substance Painter, Designer, and Alchemist. While Alchemist allows you to create high quality 3D materials out of 2D photos with a simple click, Substance Designer and Painter allows you to create materials from scratch. Substance Designer is a super powerful node-based material authoring app that allows artists to procedurally create tileable materials. It's got a crazy amount of control and the materials that you generate, you can use in your favorite 3D app of choice and you can export out any texture maps you would need like normals, displacement, and roughness maps. And you can even use it to create your own HDRs. How cool is that? And last but not least is Substance Painter, which you can think of as a Photoshop for 3D models. It allows you to paint directly onto the surface of your models in real time, allowing for a very intuitive, artistic, and immersive way to texture your models. You can even grunge up your models by painting on wear and tear, scuffs, scratches, and rust. Now, one caveat for using Substance Painter to paint directly on your models is that you actually need your models to be properly UV unwrapped. And UV unwrapping is about as fun as getting your teeth pulled, but Rhizome UV makes it fairly painless. Rhizome UV's Virtual Spaces software is many 3D artists' top choice for easy and intuitive UV unwrapping. Rhizome also has software bridges that makes the UV export from 3D software to Rhizome and then back to your 3D software workflow very streamlined. Speaking of 3D software, let's talk just that, 3D applications. Now, if you know me, you know my 3D app of choice is Cinema 4D. In my opinion, it's hands down the easiest 3D software to learn and the most popular choice for most freelancers and studios. It's got an amazing integration with Adobe products, has an intuitive UI, and the best known 3D artist in the world, Beeple, uses Cinema 4D as his tool of choice. It's got an amazing community that's all about sharing knowledge, and it's got something called a Jiggle Deformer, so I mean, come on. All right, let me take my C4D fanboy hat off for just a second and talk about Blender. Did you know it's free? Well, it is, and it's one of the major benefits of this open source and fully featured software. Once you get past its not so intuitive UI, it's a very powerful application that supports all aspects of the 3D pipeline, like modeling, rigging, compositing, and even video editing. One feature, Grease Pencil, is something that as a C40 user, I am super envious of Blender having. It allows you to draw directly in your 3D viewport. The 2D use cases for Grease Pencil are just incredible. We're talking storyboarding, concept development, onion skinning, it's insane. In addition to Grease Pencil, Blender boasts many powerful tool sets like its sculpting tools, including DinoTop, its dynamic tessellation sculpting method. And what that does is adds and removes detail as you paint. It's really awesome. Another plus with Blender is its built-in renderers, Cycles, and Eevee. Cycles is a powerful, unbiased, ray trace based rendering engine, while Eevee is Blender's real time render engine, which uses the same shading nodes as Cycles. And this allows for quick scene previews in real time and then easy switching between the renderers. Blender also boasts a supportive and active community that provides a ton of free training content on YouTube. Next up is Unreal Engine. And what started out as primarily a software used only to develop video games is now used by virtually everyone in the media industry. 
It's being used for previs, virtual sets, and even motion graphics. It's claimed the fame as being an incredibly versatile program with nearly unmatched real-time rendering abilities that allow you to build out your creations with very little concern for render time. Oh, and it's absolutely free. It integrates well with other 3D apps like Cinema 4D, where you can even take your scenes from Cinema 4D and put them directly into Unreal and take advantage of its real-time rendering. One other bonus is that the entire Megascans library I mentioned before is totally free to use inside of Unreal Engine. And finally, the one 3D software that's not for the faint of heart, Houdini. Houdini is an insanely powerful 3D app used in 3D animation and VFX and used throughout the film, commercial, and video game industries. And it's being used more and more for motion graphics work. It does have a reputation for having a very steep learning curve. You're not just gonna pick up Houdini in a week. But as many Houdini enthusiasts will tell you, it's totally worth the growing pains. It's a completely node-based and procedural workflow allowing for a crazy amount of control. And I'm willing to bet that most of the amazing dynamic simulations you see online are probably done using Houdini, but it's so much more than that. It's got particle sims, crazy procedural modeling, you name it, Houdini can do it. Plus, with its Houdini engine, it allows for its assets to be imported and procedurally edited in Maya, 3ds Max, C4D, Unreal Engine, and Unity. Think After Effects Mogerts. And they have an apprentice version that's free that you can learn on and use for non-commercial products. Now let's move on to one of the most divisive topics, third-party renderers. At any given time of the day, someone's typing, what render did you use? into an Instagram comment section. Let me preface this section with the fact that most modern renderers are super good, and at the end of the day, it's not about how good the renderer is, but how good the artist is. So don't get too caught up with which one do you use. That being said, Octane's the best. Just kidding. Let's talk about the big three, Arnold, Redshift, and Octane. Arnold is the GPU CPU based unbiased renderer that has worked on Mac for a longer amount of time than the other two renderers, but also might be the slowest of all the three renderers. Arnold does have an amazing tune renderer and that CPU and Mac support means that it's not GPU dependent like the other renderers. So it's more accessible for a lot of artists. Now, speaking of GPU dependent and Mac support, Octane's actually been super good in this area lately, expanding support to many Macs with Octane X. Octane is an unbiased renderer that creates the most beautiful renders. It's really hard to make a bad render using Octane. It's got a massive community using it, and I'd say that it's the most popular third-party renderer out there. It's also the renderer of choice for Beeple. The company that makes it, Otoy, is pretty visionary and pioneering in the industry with a lot of interesting and ambitious projects, including Render. It's decentralized cloud rendering platform. Otoy also has incredible tools in its product family, like Embergen, that has insane real-time fire, volumetric smoke, and particle simulation tools, as well as Sculptron, its real-time GPU mesh sculpting and animation tool set. Finally, we have Redshift, which is a biased renderer, meaning you can really dial in the stylistic looks that can break reality. And for anyone who is a Cinema 4D user, it's also owned by the same company, Maxon. So you would expect really tight integration over time. It's super fast and has a totally node-based material system. Its strengths are how fast it renders volumetric light and its overall speed because of its ability to dial in samples for literally any aspect of your render. Unlike Octane, Redshift does take a little bit more time to dial in a beautiful render, but if you're good at lighting, it really doesn't affect you all that much. All right, let's talk about post-production. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the fact that After Effects and Photoshop are the go-to software for compositing for most 3D artists, especially Cinema 4D artists, because of its tight integration with Adobe products. But more and more, I'm seeing Nuke being used as the compositor of choice for many 3D artists. Nuke is a powerful node-based compositing and visual effects app that was first developed by Digital Domain. Its strengths are it being a totally node-based workflow, making for much more streamlined and powerful compositing workflows. Plus, it has a full 3D workspace, allowing for the importing of 3D geometry and the combining of 2D and 3D elements directly. 
It's also got a really nice particle tool set. For 3D artists that love working in nodes, this is quickly becoming the compositing app of choice. So there you have it, my list of some of the top 3D software that I'm seeing artists using. Now the industry is always changing and it's a really exciting time to be an artist with so many tools at our fingertips. But was there some software that I did not mention that you think I should have? Be sure to complain in the comments section below. Or if there's a favorite app that I did mention, be sure to shout out that app that you really love. And be sure to like and subscribe, ring the bell so you can get notified of all the latest School of Motion tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here again sometime soon. See ya.